Welcome to the Heavy Spoilers Show. I'm your host, Definition, aka your friendly neighborhood spoiler man, and Captain America Civil War may arguably be the most important film in the MCU. This is the movie that broke the Avengers, and the entry is filled to the brim with incredible details, Easter eggs, and tidbits that flesh out the entire universe. I've binged watched the Infinity Saga countless times, and with all of this information stuffed in my head, I'm here to break down some of the best things that you may have missed in the movie. The film actually gets a lot better with the movies that follow it, and there are some crazy things that are set up here that pay off in later entries. Obviously, there will be heavy spoilers here, so if you haven't had a chance to see Civil War yet, then I highly suggest that you turn off now. If you enjoy this breakdown, then be sure to leave a like, and make sure you subscribe to the channel to never miss a video. With that out of the way, I just want to give a huge thank you for clicking this. Now let's get into our breakdown of Captain America Civil War. Okay, so the movie starts all the way back in 1991 with Hydra forces calling forth the Winter Soldier. This is to carry out a mission that would have massive repercussions on the Marvel Universe, and it sets off a chain of events that lead to the collapse of the Avengers. The Easter eggs come thick and fast, and the code that the soldier we see at the start enters is 17826. If you look at a telephone with letters on the keypad, one doesn't have any, however, 7826 all have corresponding ones that spell out Stan, which is a notable nod to Stan Lee. We then see the Winter Soldier book, which has the same star on it that Bucky's arm does. They also wipe his mind using the exact same machine from the Winter Soldier movie that preceded this one in the Captain America trilogy. Bucky is fed words that send him into a docile state, and these allow him to be controlled. These words include the numbers 1, 9, and 17, which is a reference to the year that Bucky was born, 1917. The word freight car is also used, and this could be a reference to his apparent death in Captain America the First Avenger. Homecoming is also one of the trigger words that is given lip service, which is of course a nod to the Spider-Man film of the same name, and there are also some amazing continuity details dropped shortly after. All the way back in 2008's Iron Man, we saw a newspaper chronicling the death of Howard Stark that was dated the 17th of December 1991. In Civil War we see CCTV footage which is dated the 16th of December 1991, showing that the Starks were killed and their bodies were likely found the next day and the report went out worldwide. Not long after, we cut to the Avengers mid-mission, and this pretty much kickstarts the events that lead to them going their separate ways. Cast your mind back to Age of Ultron, and you may remember a scene in which the titular villain told Scarlet Witch that she would be the one to tear the Avengers apart. Ultron's words end up ringing true here, with Wanda becoming the catalyst that drives a wedge between the group. Now, a bit of trivia here, in the introduction we see a mercenary that holds the vial, and this is played by Damon Poitier. This is the same actor that played Thanos in the mid credit scene of The Avengers, and though he was eventually recast, it's nice that the actor got to come back, even if it was just for a minor part. We can also see an Avengers logo on Cap's uniform in this introduction, however, when we catch up to him later in the film at the airport, it's being completely removed. So, he removes that when he leaves the Avengers, and later in the series when he becomes the Nomad, he removes the star on his chest, showing that he has stepped down from being Captain America. The entire film centres around the notion that you shouldn't compromise on your beliefs. This is exemplified in the speech that Sharon Carter gives at Peggy's funeral, in which she recounts how her auntie told her to plant herself like a tree and tell others to move. This is mirrored throughout the film, with several scenes in which a character refuses to move. When Black Panther comes face to face with Black Widow, his bodyguard says move or you will be moved. Bucky asks Sam to move his seat up in the car, and Falcon says no. Ant-Man stands in Black Panther's way at the airport, and Black Widow also does this. It all culminates in Cap trying to tell Iron Man in the final battle that Hydra had control over Bucky's mind, and Tony says move, which ends up with the two going head to head. The theme of breaking the Avengers up is also metaphorically shown at several points. Tony takes a pair of vintage pens to Steve in the hopes that he will finally sign the Sokovia Records. FDR signed the Lend-Lease Bill in 1941 with these, and in some ways they led to the creation of Captain America. Steve almost does it, it was so close, he almost does it, but in the end he refuses to sign. Now, to me the two pens represent Steve and Tony. 
once they were together, but after he quote unquote breaks up the set, aka the Avengers, Steve places his outside the box, showing that they are now apart. Steve placing the pen outside the case represents him being outside the box and operating beyond it. The pen that is in the box represents Tony and how he must now work within certain confines because he signed the accords. It's an amazing scene, especially when you revisit it with this in mind, and it shows the level of subtext that goes into their relationship. After the opening action scene in Nigeria, we cut to Tony Stark's bath presentation at MIT. And far from home, we learn that this was the project headed up by Quentin Beck, aka Mysterio. Mysterio remembered people laughing at the acronym that Stark had chosen for his technology, however, in Civil War, the audience is silent. This shows that Quentin remembers it a lot different to the reality of the situation, and signifies his ego led him to become a maniac. In this scene, Tony says I love you dad, and I know you did the best you could. This sets up an exchange in Endgame when Tony gets to see his father, and when Howard asks him about his dad, Stark Jr says he did his best. Tony tells the crowd to go break some eggs, and when he runs into Miriam Sharp, she says if you have the money, break as many eggs as you like. This shows he is careless, and now he's passed it on to the world and must be held accountable. Miriam Sharp was in the original Civil War comic book arc, and she was pretty much the face of the Superhero Registration Act. Shortly after, we jump to Steve Rogers, sitting watching the news. In his room, he can actually see the monkey that he sketched in the first film when he was fed up of performing the Star Spangled Man with a plan. The first time it appeared was to show how he thought that people viewed him, and in the wake of the disaster, it reappears here to show that he once more believes that that is what the public think of him. At the Accords meeting, we learn that 74 died during the Battle of New York. When Vision is discussing the causality between the rise of the Avengers and the way that the world is turned, Rhodey says boom, which is a callback to the story that he told in Age of Ultron which also ended the same way. In Age of Ultron, Rhodey took down many versions of the robot, and because of this we can see that he's painted his armour with Ultron Sentinel heads. Cap gets a text that Peggy has passed away, and journeys to a funeral. The writers of the film confirm recently that the old man we see carrying Peggy Carter's casket is actually old Steve Rogers. Depending on what version of Endgame timelines you subscribe to, whether it's the writers or directors, this is either a cool little easter egg, or, well, it just doesn't make any sense. Anyway, passing that, at the funeral we learn that Agent 13 is actually the niece of Peggy Carter. If you revisit the Winter Soldier, you will see a scene in which he hangs up the phone and says to Steve that she was calling her aunt. She says she has insomnia, and insomnia appears in one in four people with dementia. We learn in that film that Peggy has dementia, and therefore there were some clues to set this reveal up. Shortly after this, the bombing that kills King T'Chaka is apparently carried out by Bucky. We later learn that he was framed using facial prosthetics, and we saw these used in the Winter Soldier in which Black Widow donned a disguise. We later discover that Zemo murdered the doctor assigned to Bucky, and this was actually a cameo by director Joe Russo, who has pretty much appeared in all of the movies that he's been a part of. Bucky is also placed in Holding Cell D23, which is a reference to the Disney event that happens every year in which they showcase their latest movies and projects. We see in the film that Bucky is the first person to understand a German tannoy, as we learn in the movie that the Winter Soldiers can speak multiple languages. Civil War is also about the friendship between Bucky and Steve, and how since the death of Peggy, Bucky is all that Steve has from his past. It really brings the film together, and there's a scene in which they reminisce over their life. Bucky talks about a girl he once dated named Dolores, aka Dot, and this could be a reference to the character from Agent Carter, Dottie Underwood. It's during this time that Tony visits Peter Parker in order to recruit him. He waits with May for Peter to return home from school, and when he does, we can actually see that May is wearing Ben's wedding ring around her neck. This is clearly a tribute to the character, who we learn has died before we ever got a chance to meet him in the MCU. Tony asks if Peter has a passport, and in Spider-Man Homecoming, we see that the date of Peter's passport is May the 3rd, 2016. This is actually three days before the release of the film, so it looks like Tony pulled some strings in order to get him to the airport. Now the fight scene was pretty much analysed to death on YouTube upon its release, but there's actually a lot of things that happen in it that return in later movies. After becoming Giant Man and getting tied up, Scott asks if anyone has any orange slices. In Avengers Endgame, after Hawkeye returns from his first time travel trip, we can actually see Scott trying to grab him some orange slices in the background. The battle ends with War Machine plummeting to Earth and becoming paralysed because of it. Clearly Tony feels a lot of guilt over this, especially because the film ends with him helping his friend to learn to walk again. In order to stop this from happening after the movie, 
Tony builds a parachute into Spider-Man's costume. Clint introduces himself by name and T'Challa shoots him down, saying that he doesn't care. This pops back up in Avengers Endgame when Black Panther actually acknowledges him by name when the group run the gauntlet. During the fight, Spider-Man and Cap come face to face. The webhead says that Stark told him to go for the legs, and when Tony and Steve fight later in the film, this is one of the first things that the character does. Cap also does a spin and pull to defeat Peter, and Peter would later do this in Homecoming, showing that he learned from his opponent. When War Machine and Iron Man land at the airport, the former shakes the camera and this shows that his suit is much heavier than Stark's. T'Challa lands silently due to his shock absorbent feet and these later go on to make his sneakers in the solo film for the character. Steve and Bucky get away and the other members of the group get arrested and confined to the raft. When we see Scott in his cell later, he can be seen tapping away, almost like a drum kit. Later the character would come to spend a lot of his time drumming when under house arrest in Ant-Man and the Wasp. Tony learns of Cap's true mission and what's really going on and he sets off to meet the pair. Now after the invention of Vision which pulled from Jarvis, Tony updated his AI to a female sounding voice named Friday. When asking if she's run facial recognition on Zemo, she says, what do I look like? Tony replies that he was thinking of a redhead, and though this could be a reference to Pepper Potts, it's actually also a callback to the comics in which Friday was a ginger. Tony learns the truth about his parents' death and he lunges for Bucky. Cap is able to hold him back and this is because you can hear that he doesn't have any hydraulics powered on. This is Tony moving the suit on his own, powered by raw emotion. During the fight, Tony uses the laser from Iron Man 2 that he said he can only use once and this is why he doesn't reappear later in the fight. Iron Man also fights using the martial arts form Wing Chun, which we saw him learning in Iron Man 3. The fight ends with everyone feeling like they're lost and Tony and Cap go their separate ways. Tony says his father made the shield, which is a callback to Captain America the First Avenger. Everyone sits around contemplating the losses that they've faced, and we see Vision thinking about the events. During this scene he is holding a rook, which is the only chess piece that isn't a person. This shows he doesn't believe that he is truly human, rather just a weapon of war. We get the awesome Tony Stank line from Stan Lee, and this chronologically lets us know that the movie takes place before Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2, as in that he talks about the time he was a FedEx guy. The movie ends with Tony receiving a phone from Cap, which would later appear in Infinity War, though Tony refused to use it. In the post credit scene, Peter says that he was hit by Steve from Brooklyn, who is of course Captain America. He also says that his friend was huge, which is a nod to Giant Man. Anyway, that's our entire list. And as always, with the MCU, I had a hell of a lot of fun making this video, and I hope you enjoyed it too. Obviously, I'd love to hear your thoughts on the tidbit, so comment below and let me know. If you want something else to watch, then make sure you check out our breakdown of the insane details that we noticed in Avengers Infinity War, as there's some crazy details in that that I haven't really seen anyone mention before. Every month on the 15th, we give away free Blu-rays, and all you have to do to be in with a chance of winning the Infinity Saga box set is comment below, leave a like, and subscribe with notifications on. If you want to support the channel and get to see content early, then please consider clicking the join button. You can also come chat to us on our Discord server link below or at DefinitionYT on Twitter. That's the best way to keep up to date with the channel, so hopefully we see you over there very soon. This is a channel for people who are super into superheroes, so if that's the kind of thing you like, hit subscribe. Thank you for taking the time to watch this, I've been Definition, you've been the best and I'll see you next time. Take care, peace.